Assalamu alaikum and welcome everyone chapter 4 6 of the Arduino series in this video I'm going to be covering a very basic component that I would say is essential and falls under the display category it is the single digit 7 segment display as per usual a quick rundown just to improve our understanding of the component there's a total of 10 pins two of them will be ground as I'll show you later the other eight will be dedicated to lighting up the lights seven of those will be dedicated to the seven segments allowing us to make the full combination of numbers and the final one for the decimal point now to be specific, I'm using the 5611AH segmented display, which has the common cathode arrangement. The other configuration is the common anode, and the only difference between them is how everything is powered. Instead of having pin 3 and pin 8 of the display being connected to the ground, it will be connected to the voltage in. Each segment, including the decimal place, has an LED connected to it, and when a current is passed through that respective pin, it's going to light up. We can control which LEDs are turned on and which ones are turned off, allowing us to depict certain letters and all the numbers. You're going to need the Arduino, a breadboard, 11 male to male jumper wires and a resistor, I'm using 330 ohms. If you go higher, the less vibrant the LED is going to be. The pin layout that I've chosen is very non-conventional, however it allows me to demonstrate a lot better. I've divided the segments of the display into three groups the right side, the center LEDs and the left LEDs with the decimal point being placed at pin 12. Other than the way you connect the third and eighth pin together, you do not have to follow my pin layout. But just so that we're on the same page, I'm going to go through the pins. The first one on the display is going to be connected to pin 9. The second is going to be connected to pin 6. The fourth is going to be connected to pin 10. And the fifth from the top is going to be connected to pin 3. The third and eighth pin are going to be connected in series to a resistor. The end of the resistor is going to be grounded. The 6th is going to be connected to pin 5, the 7th is going to be connected to pin 8, the 9th is going to be connected to pin 2, and the 10th pin on the display is going to be connected to pin 12. Now if you did use my pin layer, I suggest you use the same names as I did for the pins, and the last variable is going to be used in the delay function. The void setup is quite basic, I just activate the serial monitor with a board rate of 9600, and I make sure that all the pins are output pins. To start off in the void loop, I have two variables. The first one user input is going to store the value of the integer that's stored or passed through in the buffer of the serial monitor. The second one is going to store the value of the user input once a condition is met in the if statement. In the first if statement, I tell the Arduino that if user input is equal to a number from 1 to 10, then make check user input equal to user input. We will later use check user input for our switch and case function. The purpose of the nested if statement is to tell the user that the inputted value will have no output. In the else function, I tell the Arduino to print the value that the user has inputted and to redirect that value stored in check user input to the function called activate digital display. This is a custom function that is primarily made up of a switch statement. Within the statement, there are a total of 11 cases from 0 to 10, each to correspond with a value that can be depicted on the display. Now we are done with the code and it's time to upload but before that just make sure your port and your board are connected properly through the tools tab. Now once that's done you want to open up your serial monitor and now you can input any value from 1 to 10. The problem with 0 is that since we're using the command serial.passint 0 will not be able to be inputted in. And I guess you can say this is one of the bugs of the code so you can give it a try and see if you can come around it and solve the problem. And that concludes the end of the video. If you did enjoy and you did learn something new, consider giving the video a like. And if you wish to join the small community that I'm trying to build, there's going to be my Discord linked in the description.